Yeah, I, I'm interested in in the use cases and arch, architecturally the deployment models for Kafka, um, including like a pub sub model for like you're talking about there. Uh, but first, I'd like to talk about data integration because uh, in previous uh, writings on your blog, you've talked about uh, data integration built on a traditional static data source will inevitably end up with a high degree of coupling and poor scalability. How can switching to an event processing model for integration overcome that issue? So in terms of scalability, I suppose in terms of integration, the way that we've historically built systems is I've got data in this one place and I now want it in this other place. I'm going back many, many years. It's like, well, that's fine. We had like one great big mainframe and we maybe copy it from one subsystem to another subsystem. And then move on a few years, it's like, well, we've got this one great big central transactional server and another great big central data warehouse, and we'll just copy the things between them. And that's kind of point to point, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward a few more years, and I guess we're talking like 10, 15 years ago, and suddenly that whole thing exploded. And suddenly there was numerous different databases to choose from, numerous different cloud services to choose from, and people were running software under their desks. And it was it was no longer the purview of like just this elite kind of like data team. It was like anyone who could spin up a server or had a credit card could now start storing data and producing data and wanting to extract data or send data. And so you ended up with this huge, huge spaghetti ball of tightly coupled mess. Like you say, I want to get data from this place to this place. And someone else would say, well, I also want data from this place, so I'm going to copy it to here, but I can't copy it to here until this feed has run. And then that feed breaks and like 10 people start screaming. And we only knew about one of them and nine other people like piggyback onto, back, onto the back of that. So the point around using something like Kafka for integration is that when an event happens, it gets published onto a topic. It doesn't get deleted from that topic until the person who created that topic they've defined how long to keep that data, which could be, we want to keep it based on time. Like let's keep this data here for 10 years or 10 days or whatever's appropriate to that business case or based on size. Let's keep the last like 10 terabytes worth of that particular topic, or indeed let's keep it forever. It depends entirely on the particular piece of data or the entity that you're working with. Anyone else who wants that data can subscribe to that topic and independently read from it. So you can have like very, very like, near real time exchange of data between like data gets produced, like an order gets written and these other services can read from that and know about it almost instantaneously. You can have other systems, maybe just like a, an audit system or a machine learning model that wants to kind of like get some training data. They can read from that. They can hook up to it once a day and say like, give me all of the new data. But the point is the data is there on that topic in Kafka for anyone to read who's got permission to access it. So it's a much more loosely coupled way of saying, here's some data we got created, and now anyone who needs that data can access it, but without building these tight couplings together. So it makes it more loosely coupled. It also makes it more scalable because Kafka is a distributed system. So as you have more data in it, more throughput, you add in more and more Kafka brokers and you get more scalability from it. And your consuming systems can consume in parallel. Um, so it's, it's much better that way also. Yeah, I mean, when I think about event processing engines like Kafka, obviously you have models like uh, Internet of Things devices, which are generating lots of events or or LinkedIn or whatever it may be, which are where there's some event occurring on the website where they just need to tr track vast amounts of data as people are doing stuff. But of course, those transactional databases that you're talking about are still incredibly important within an enterprise. So how do you stream events from those large SQL databases into Kafka? So there's, there's two different approaches. One is the application that wrote the data to that database writes it to Kafka. So it depends why we're we writing it to a database. Are we writing it to a database just because that's what we've always done? We've always, always written data to a database, so we'll keep on writing it to a database. Or actually, do we say, well, we didn't actually need it in a database in the first place. We only put it into a database as a way of exchanging it with other systems. In which case you say, well, given if it's appropriate for the project, let's just change it and write it to Kafka instead. A lot of the time that's not an option, at least initially. Initially, everyone's like, no, we're not changing anything or the scope of this project isn't to actually do that. So you can use something called change data capture. 
which lets you take data from the database and stream it into anywhere else, including Kafka. Um, so many, many different databases uh, support this way of doing it. It's like the, the details differ, but like Oracle's got, um, it's redo log that you can get the data out of the transaction log. There's the bin log in MySQL, uh, Postgres, all the relational databases have got the, ta the concept of a transaction log and you can actually capture the events uh, such as an insert, an update, even deletes. You can capture that data out of the database and you can stream it into the places, uh, including Kafka. Mm -hmm.